Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Deepa, and I cover AI at CB Insights. As Anand mentioned earlier, this is a very diverse crowd. And one thing most of you have in common is that you indicated on Brella that you're either interested in knowing more about AI or in sharing AI-related strategies with other attendees. And I can tell from the initial few meetings I've had this morning that everyone's looking at very specific and narrow use cases to see what's feasible for their own business models. And I think that's great. Um, it's indicative that we're moving past the hype cycle and really seeing what, what works in AI for us. So when we try to think of how much the AI market is worth, here's a CB Insights consensus, but valuations out there range from a few billion dollars to several trillion dollars. And the reason for this huge variation is that we're not talking about any one industry, but software that is fundamentally changing processes across all these different, different industries and many more, from wealth management to agriculture to retail to cybersecurity. And very few traditional corporations right now across these industries are either investing in their own R&D or recruiting AI talent. Instead, what we're seeing is a lot of startup partnerships and startup acquisitions. So it's not surprising here that you see close to 2,000 new AI companies have come up just in the last two to two and a half years most of them offering AI software as a service, and a record high in funding too this year, even before the close of the year. Uh, a lot of this is data janitor work, data cleaning, um, sorting the data on the back end, but two applications that have really taken off are obviously computer vision, the ability to see, identify, and classify things, and also natural language processing and synthesis. If you have pre-ordered the Pixel 3 from Google, your assistant on the phone can not only screen calls for you, but also make reservations at restaurants. So you can really see these two applications finding commercial use cases from healthcare to retail to consumer electronics. So with so much going on in AI, um, technology that is so broad and so many different industries involved, how do you really keep track of what's next and identify trends that are relevant to you? So to help with a basic roadmap around this, we've used what we call the NEXT framework, where we measure these trends across four quadrants as they move through, the, move through industries based on adoption as well as market strength. Some things we consider, how is the patent activity for this particular technology? Um, how many people are using it? What's the investment in R&D, startup funding, quality of investors? Um, so using these, we really came up with 25 things that uh, we think you should watch out for in the next couple of months. And breaking these down across the AI value chain, right from the basic infrastructure that you need, to innovation that's happening on the software architecture side, to applications, some of which we discussed, but we will in more detail. And two quadrants I want to specifically uh, run through today are the necessary quadrant, obviously trends that are high adoption also have a high market value but also the experimental quadrant, which is very interesting because this is, this is where all the buzz is in the academic circle and maybe one or two corporate research labs, but it really gives us a clue as to what to expect in the next two to five years. So starting with trends that you really need to have a strategy for at this point, um, facial recognition is the first one, and it became mainstream for a lot of us with the iPhone X and the ability to log in without fingerprints or passcodes. But one thing that immediately comes to mind with face recognition is China and surveillance. Here's a Washington Post article on how the facial recognition algorithms there were able to detect a suspect from a crowd of concert goers. One thing that sets China apart from the United States is the government, A, has been very vocal about its strategy, but also how seamlessly it works with the big tech companies and the startups there. But even in the US, we are seeing this technology take off. Here's like patent up patent application activity just for facial recognition, and you can see uh, tremendous interest there. And commercial applications taking off too, despite some bloopers. Uh, you may have read Amazon's tech misidentified a few congressmen as criminals, but despite that, they're still trying to sell to law enforcement officials. Also related to computer vision, uh, another application that has a huge potential to save lives and improve quality of lives is medical imaging and diagnostics. Healthcare has consistently been the top industry for AI deals across the years, and within that, diagnostics has been a major driver. 
even a few years ago when we were talking to startups uh, that were uh, in the AI diagnostic space, the main concern was how is the FDA going to respond? Are there going to be regulatory bottlenecks? But what we're seeing is the FDA has been very quick to come on board, and in many cases, they've started fast-tracking approvals of AI-assisted diagnostics. The first company you see there, IDX, uh, their software is appro was approved for screening patients for diabetic retinopathy without the need for a second opinion from an expert. Uh, so for diagnostics or facial recognition, for many of the other trends that you will come across in AI, one hardware trend that is catching on and it's going to be crucial is edge computing. We are already seeing a lot of chatter on earnings calls around edge AI. You can see NVIDIA, Intel, SoftBank, Microsoft, everyone talking about how to plan around this. And the reasons are obvious. If you're in an autonomous vehicle, you don't want these sensors and the software to perceive what's going on on the road, communicate with the cloud server, get a decision back, and then act on it. These, these decisions have to be processed in real time, and time is crucial. And so we're going to see this become an integral part of how AI is applied, not just in mobility, but also consumer electronics, robotics, um, industrials, and many other fields. Some, um, as I mentioned, that those were trends on our, few trends on our next necessary quadrant, but also looking at where the early adopters are, which is the experimental quadrant in the next frame framework. Uh, one interesting thing is, uh, which has been trending a lot on Twitter lately, is generative adversarial networks. It sounds like a mouthful, but it's a very interesting concept that was introduced in 2014. And you can think of it as the power of AI versus AI. You have two neural networks that are trying to outsmart each other, and they're getting very good at creating fake images. So if you want to take a guess at which ones are fake here, I guess the yellow one looks fake, obviously. But everything from the dog to the butterfly to the burger, all of them are AI-generated images. None of these are real. So the role of the first network is to come up with an image of a dog and say, hey, this is how I think it looks. And the second network says, OK, you're close, or you're way off the mark, and gives the feedback again to the first loop. So it's like a loop. And the same technology was used to create this artwork. So this is the first AI-generated artwork, or that was the marketing around it. Personally, I wouldn't buy it, but someone bought it for $432,000 at Christie's. Um, on a more serious note, as much as this can find creative uses in advertising, media, et cetera, there's also potential misuse. Here's a deep fake video of John Oliver turning to Steve, Stephen Colbert in these face-to-face -face technology, right? So this is already being misused in fake political videos, morphed, porn morphed pornography. Um, companies like Wall Street Journal are talking about training their reporters to be able to better identify this as this becomes more mainstream. Another emerging trend uh, on the quadrant is uh, obviously popularized by Amazon, which is checkout free retail. So Amazon introduced these go grab and go style stores where you walk in, take what you want, and walk out. Actually, as soon as they announced their plans in 2015, there was this huge frenzy in China for being the first person to make this unmanned or like cashierless store. Um, and despite a lot of deals going here, we're also seeing some costly failures because the tech is very difficult to execute and bring together and like mismanagement, tech glitches. Um, but despite this, we do have retailers that are partnering with startups to uh, test it out. One thing to remember is that Amazon has a very controlled environment. Their stores right now are about 3,000 square feet. They have very specific things they have on shelves, very controlled entry only for Prime members. But when you take that out to a supermarket that's 40,000 square feet, you have things in your inventory like apparel and clothing, which is harder for the algorithm to make sense of. These are all like added layers of complexities to keep in mind. But if this takes off, obviously, it's going to fundamentally change retail, and shopping is going to feel like shoplifting without the guilt. Some other trends, um, one of my favorites is clinical trial enrollment, because we don't typically think of this when we think AI. But if you have, or if you know anyone who has navigated this process, it's incredibly complex, financially, emotionally, time-wise, both for the recruiting party as well as for patients. And we're beginning to see, especially with Apple and some early state startups, uh, doing a lot in this space with natural language processing. And very excited to see where that goes. 
Um, obviously, a lot of trends, a lot of industries, and um, I'm very happy to chat with you about your specific industries or adjac adjacent industries that you may be interested in. You can find me in Brella, or I'll be outside in the networking area somewhere. Um, so that's it for the talk. I'm very excited for the next talk by Baidu Ventures, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you very much.